Hey everybody, how you doing? It's lunchtime, so you know what that means. Another great episode of Lunchtime Talk with Steve. Today we are here. We have Dr. Adrian Daisley. Um, he's um, from Barbados. He went out to Brazil. He's been there for a couple of years. Now he's back in Barbados, and we're going to talk to him about what it's like. Um, you know, the contrast between the two countries and working in both countries, and all the different things that um, that he that he's done so far in his life, and even some of the projects he has coming up. All right, so let's go ahead and. Um, you share it out with your friends, your relatives, your favorite groups on Facebook, Instagram, whatever, and let's make this happen, okay? All right, be right back with you guys, and we'll talk to um to the doctor in just a second. <laughs> Let me tell you about CCTV RX. With over 30 years in the security industry here in South Florida, they have proven themselves to be the first choice when it comes to security professionals. So whether you're trying to secure your home or your business, there's no other choice. Give them a call today for a free estimate. Savvy, create your own compelling graphics, sales pages, and marketing tools? Would you like to effectively use social media to generate more leads? If the answer is yes, register for one or all of the eight module digital marketing series. You will feel comfortable in a judge free, nurturing environment as we get the work done. My name is Melissa Jane and I am your tech trainer. If your car could talk, it would say call Curvin's Car Detailing Service. It's mobile and they can come to you no matter where you are in Broward County. Give Curvin a call, 954-549-8507 and tell them that Steve sent you. Baby, won't you take me there? I want some real good food to eat. I want shucking it down. designers to get your taste palette back in line baby follow us at we shop all right so we're back and we are here today like i said with dr adrian daisy um daisy hey doc how are you doing today i'm doing well are you there how are you doing i'm doing great i'm yes, doing great all right so go ahead and introduce yourself to our viewers 
and then we're gonna get in and um, we're gonna jump right into the conversation, okay? Okay, thank you. A pleasant good afternoon. I'm Dr. Adrian Isley. I'm from the beautiful country of Barbados. I'm an international coach and motivational speaker. I spent six years working in Brazil and I recently returned in November just before COVID-19 to visit family. And um, I work with some international organizations, including Carfe Busca, represented in St. Martin. And in this organization, it's a nonprofit organization designed to help entrepreneurs create their own businesses, build their own businesses, and receive funding from government organizations. We take them through the entire process. As a life coach, one of the things that I found necessary is to people with their networking capacity. And so I'm writing um, several books, coaching as well as networking and effective networking. So I was really happy to be able to be on this program with none other than Steve Barrow. I followed his work since I was in, actually in Brazil because one of the organizations I worked with called CACMEX, we had a friend in common. And um, I, I started following his work via LinkedIn and what he was doing also. I was very fascinated. All right. And, um, and I appreciate that very much. Um, so let's let's get to the some of the things that um that are a little bit different. Um, talk to me about the culture. What's the difference in the culture in Brazil as opposed to the culture in Barbados? Well, well, to be honest with you, Barbados, we are friendly people, but we are friendly from a from 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 about maybe three four weeks. We start to really get into people. Brazil, they mm -hmm. get into you on the very first visit. They invite you to their house. They invite you out for a beer. They're, they have really big hearts. The difference in cultural expression of Brazil is that mm -hmm. they are not afraid to show their emotions. Mm -hmm. And um, my experience was fascinating because these are people who are really, really creative. They, they use simple things to make life better. And whereas here, we would probably be complaining about how bad things are and waiting for certain organizations to get involved to help us. If they don't do that, they, they are of the opinion, I have to help myself, and so they do so. All right, um, but um, okay, so that's one of the differences. What are some of the similarities of Barbados and Brazil? Well, um, the similarities really, um, the food. For example, for example, there's something called feijoada, and feijoada yes. is a stew, is made with the same cow heel and cow foot, um, that we would, uh, and also pig, sorry, pig heel and pig foot that we would normally right. use. However, they use black beans, and right. it isn't pickled. It is stew. It's really, really, really delicious. And also at their Independence Independence Day, so do something called bacalhau. And bacalhau with salt fish. They do this mm -hmm. with English potatoes and onions and tomatoes and stuff. And they make a, a nice baked paste and they put it in the oven. And it tastes really good. Um, they also use something called pamoya. Pamoya is similar to our conky here in Barbados. It's that they put Sometimes they put raisins, coconut, or they can make it salty as well. I love Brazil, mm -hmm. man. Brazil, Brazil, Brazil. And also the food. Um, if they're making peas and rice, for example, they do not they not mix the peas and the rice together. They make the peas separate. Um, right. <laughs> and breakfast, breakfast, <laughs> yeah, Steve. Breakfast there isn't like our common breakfast. We have to have bacon and eggs and toast and no breakfast for them is a slice of bread and coffee. That's breakfast. Yeah, you or know, some powder cashew. Really probably... Sorry. Or oh, they use powder cashew, the little um, cheese bread. Yeah, um, powder cashew, but powder cashew isn't a breakfast thing. No. It's a, a all through the day kind. Of thing. If you if you go to their house, for example, they will buy they will buy bologna, they will buy ham, what they call presunto, um, and mortadella. Okay, and, and what they will do is they will roll these things with salt, um, mustard. Ketchup, maybe they make, put a little honey. I love my honey. 
So I put a little honey <laughs> in it, and they would roll it with, yeah, and put it in the bread. And, mm -hmm. and my father, for example, my father on on holidays, what my father would, my father would put a big thick piece of anchor cheese in a bread and put it in the oven and get it hard and crunchy. You know, they mm -hmm. do similar. They do something similar, um, but smaller. What you call those um, those pounds of queijo. As a matter right. of fact, I'm I'm allergic to cheese, so I'm I don't eat it as often. Now, oh, I love pounds of queijo. I, like, um, I mean, I can pop them the little little ball like that, and I can pop them in my mouth two at a time. You know what I mean? I love them. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Have you have you tried? Have you tried the? Oh yeah, the oh yeah. The company the company I work for is actually a Brazilian company, so I've had just about every Brazilian food you can imagine. Um, everything from churrasco to um to um you know feijoada, wow. um you name okay. it. <laughs> Only thing I don't like is there's a little um there's a a powder um mm. I, I don't know if it's cassava that they put on the feijoada. Um, that's the only thing I I, I don't know that one you know. <laughs> Are you still there? Oh, oh yeah. Um, it, it, this is, uh, th yeah, this, hello? Yeah, I'm here. Sorry. I, I, it I just seems like you're, it seems like you're, um, you're breaking up. Um, I don't know if your connection is that good. Yes. Yeah. I can hear you, but. I, I, right. I think, um, I think it's your connection. Um, I think you may be. Because I'm looking at it on my monitor as well, and it, um, I think it might be the connection. Yeah, we're about to get some rain, so I imagine that. Ah, okay. Okay. But go ahead and um and tell me though. So what? So yeah. what was it that you were doing in Bar I mean, in Brazil? What um were you in um in um you were teaching, or what was it that you were doing there? Yeah, I I taught I taught English um initially and i also was a chef um for an italian restaurant these were things that i did because i couldn't speak portuguese um having having um trans portuguese and mastered the language um i ended up working um for kakamets at kakamets at association with the chamber um this company really was trying to create um in roads linking businesses in the Alshtiati region. And these are more than 500 businesses that we're talking about. So we were working with large associations to, to bring representation of Brazil to, to the Caribbean, linking them through the organizations that I would have been working with here in, in, um, in St. Martin, directly St. Martin and Israel. I was also the national representative for the Caribbean Israel Leadership Coalition. And what they do is that they represent international technology Cyber, cyber security and that kind of stuff. And so I, I've, I've been privileged really to have those opportunities uh, because being in a foreign country, not knowing persons, it can be very intimidating, not speaking the language and being black. So, so yeah, I managed to maneuver and network pretty effectively. So now that you're back in Barbados, um, you're in Barbados right now, right? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. So now, yes. now that you're back in Barbados, what would you say you brought from um, from Brazil um, back with you as far as what did you learn over there that you um, you brought back to Barbados? Yes, well, one thing I learned is the importance of helping others. I've learned um, the importance of connecting with people and our society. The second thing is the language. I've mastered mm -hmm. Portuguese and I've mastered the art of masters of the language as well mm -hmm. as the culture of the people. I want to export the Brazilian culture from Brazil to Barbados in the form of food and festivals. And that's one of the reasons why I got involved with um, Carfibusca because one of the things we're doing is looking at linking um, countries mm -hmm. through culture. Oh, so, um, so, yeah. so, um, like what, what in the culture? Right now, what in, right now we are, we're at a time because of, sorry. No, go ahead. You're know saying. <laughs> yeah. Okay. For, 
for example, the music, the music, the um, the the, cult, the the music, the drums. We we have we have a drum mentality here in the Caribbean because we're all descendants of Africans. However, right. um, it is a scene like I mean, it is a scene pop or it is a scene like rap. And so one of the things I think Africans have to do is to export the culture so that people can see how rich they are. Brazil is the first place that I've lived that's been so full with cultural expressions. And it isn't only originating in Brazil, it's all kinds of cultures that have left a part of themselves in Brazil. All right, and so and so, um, so when we look at Brazil, for example, then, and we see some of the, um, the, the issues yes. and the turmoil that's going on now, what, um, what about that? How is it living in, in Brazil and seeing the issues that are happening in Brazil? Well, well, to be honest with you, uh, in Brazil, in Brazil, there are many, many social issues, a lot of social unrest. And this is because of stubbornness. Lots of leaders really don't like to listen or care what the people want. This is, this is a reality. I would like, I would like the opportunity to, to take Barbados. You're breaking up really bad. You're, you're really breaking up. Um, are you on your phone or on a laptop? I think we lost them. I think, um, yeah, I think we lost them there for a second. Um, all right, so I'll wait for him to, um, to pop back in when he, um, when he reconnects. Is it him that we lost, or was it me that we lost? Let me um, <laughs> let me check the um, the the feed and see. But yeah, it's um, it was him that we lost. I'm still um, I'm still alive. Okay, um, let's see. Looks like looks like he's popping back in now. Hello. Doc. Hello. Hey, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay, go ahead and finish the thought. That um, go ahead and finish your thought. Yes, I am. Your music. Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, I was mm -hmm. saying that the, there is there is political unrest in Brazil. Because for many years, there have been lack of attention. Yeah. I keep getting cut off. No, I can hear you. I can hear you. Go ahead. Hello? I'm here. I can hear you. I think I, I. I'm not sure if are you on Wi-Fi or are you on your phone, your laptop? What are you on? Because the connection you're on is not that strong. I don't know exactly what connection you're using, but it's not strong. It's 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 um it's breaking up. Okay. Uh, sorry. I, I I thought you were signaling to me to. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Talk. I can hear you though. Stop. Yeah, um, I am trying hard because every every time we get a break, I lose my train of thought. No, go ahead, continue. I'm, go ahead, continue. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm wife. Okay. Right. So what would you like to do? Would you like to revisit? Um, I'm not sure if it's the weather that you're getting in there or not, but you're um you're breaking up really bad um in between. Um let me see. What's to let's see. Um, okay. 
Right. Go ahead. Um, Go ahead. Because of many years of lack of attention to this social unrest, many things have gone not only not looked at, ignored. Yes, to the point where Jesus, I'm really being. He dropped his connection. Dropped. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I guess they're having really bad weather down in Barbados. He was saying it looks like it's going to rain there. I don't know if that's what it was, um, or if it's just a Wi-Fi connection. I'm not sure. But um, but yeah, I mean, really, what I wanted to do is I wanted to chat more about the um, you know the cultural differences and um, and things like that, and also some of the politics that we see in Brazil as opposed to politics we see in in, um, in Barbados, you know, and, um, and, and other countries. So that's one of the things I wanted to really look into. Um, we're gonna have to definitely get him back on here um, another time because I really enjoyed the conversation with him. I enjoyed the things that, um, that the differences that we see and the similarities that we see because it's not always about the differences, you know. Um, so some those are some of the things. Um, so yeah, I definitely want to find out more. And if any of you guys want to be a guest on the show, definitely reach out to me. Just go to the um to the website to lunchtime talk with and and you could always be a guest anytime you want to be. You know, just um book the whatever date works for you. I think he's about to reconnect now. It looks like he's gonna reconnect in a second. So let's see. Oh, no, it didn't reconnect. He flashed in for a second, but then he's gone again. All right. So basically, um, like I said, there's a lot that I wanted to chat about, um, about Brazil and, and just um, learn more about the culture, learn more about the food, learn more about the people, um, about the, um, you know, some of the things that he experienced there when it came to, to interacting with them, um, with the Brazilian culture, with the, the Brazilian people. So, oh, I think he's trying to reconnect again. Doc? Can you hear me? I can hear you. I'm sorry. I, I have no control over the weather, man. No, nah, no problem, no problem. <laughs> So tell me about when, when I, you were there. Tell me about um, about you know you were saying like political unrest and things like that. Um, so how do you find that to be different, or what do you what do you um, what do you see um, the, okay. as far as the government in Brazil, in Brazil as um, as opposed to Brazil the government of Barbados? Well, the government in Barbados is very much even more supportive than the Brazilian go government simply because uh, they don't talk about they don't talk about democracy in Barbados only they actually demonstrate it and our Barbadian um, society knows that we have rights and when we talk about our rights we can go somewhere and find representation for our rights there is mm -hmm. a really really long difficult process when a person for example wrongs you you have to wait um, sometimes months before you, you're even heard. And, and some people just decide to give up and not pursue any form of legal action because of the tardiness. Um, also, also, we can speak about the things that we are upset about in Barbados or in the Caribbean. There, if you speak, is you're, you're automatically ostracized. And so many people put up with what is happening because they're afraid that they can't change it. And you and, and when you speak to the older generation, the older generation are the ones who tell you that, you know, this is never going to change. You know, hmm. the, the younger generation is different because the younger generation is more vocal. But even in the vocality, they're still not they're still not really doing anything to bring about change. Um, they're a very passive society. If you, if you wanna, if you wanna be cool, you know, be clear. They're very passive, passive aggressive. You know, and beat tops and pans and stuff. But, but ask them to sign their name to something, they probably would say no. 
or ask him to go on television and talk about the real issues, probably was saying no, because also in a political situation, they're very afraid of losing their lives. Their assassination wow. is very common. Yeah, it, wow. it, where, where it was okay, but, but you know, so I would go out walking, you know, maybe around 10 o'clock, and all the persons in the neighborhood would tell me, you know, you have to be back by, by 11 o'clock because you can get mugged. I, I was there for six years. I know six people who've been mugged, you know, within my neighborhood. And I've never been mugged once, thank God. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> I, when I came back to Barbados, the very first thing I did when I when I reached the, the tarmac is I kissed the floor. And, and you know, I was really, <laughs> really grateful to be back in my, in my country. Because there, you don't have any family. Um, having... Having assimilate a culture in a, in a strange environment has not been an easy task. You go mm -hmm. through so many lonely times of you're trying to realize your dream. And obviously they're asking, so where is your representation? It was only coming on to the end that I already started to get some form of representation from my from the Caribbean. And the you know, the biggest the biggest thing I tell people all the time is when you step out on your own, you know, um, sometimes you don't get that you don't get that kind of support that you you would expect even if you're trying to do something for your country um but i'm seeing some form of reach back persons are getting in touch with me and stuff i guess because i've proven after six years that you can survive in a strange place <laughs> and you can do well <laughs> mm -hmm. so where in brazil were you what part of brazil were you in yeah, I was in Mochi das Cruzes in São Paulo. Okay. So I was so, in Brazil, about four hours away from Brasilia. Ah, okay. Um, all right. So, yes. um, and, and when you were there, did you find that um, that there was um, now um, before you said as a black man in Brazil? I mean, did you feel um, welcomed, or did you feel um, you know how how did you feel when you were there? Well, honestly, it was mixed. There are some groups, um, for example, uh, the, the, the government organizations that I was involved with didn't show me any form of, of you know, um, racism or anything like that. They were really welcoming. But some smaller groups, you can tell that because you most black people in Brazil aren't considered, you know, a part of the society to be really educated or to be developed. And so, and so when you arrive on the scene, you question your credibility, they question, you know, whether or not you are who you say you are. And when they realize all these organizations are getting behind you, the first thing they ask me, you're black. How, how did this happen? And you're in a strange country. Um, but then, for example, I feel, I personally feel from my, my experiences there, that you you had to just push forward and believe in what you were doing, no matter what other people said. To you. And I'm very determined that I was raised. Like I don't care, as we would say, come hell or high water, I'm gonna make it in this place because I can't, can't go back. Can't go back to my country after making all these sacrifices to learn a language empty-handed, so to speak. So I turned to my country, you know, more fortified than I was when I left. I, you know, when I left, I I had my PhD and that kind of stuff, but one of one of the our greatest um the former prime minister barbados he said to me dr disney you 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 have to expand and in expanding he he literally may leave leave your country you've been to america you've been to canada and those places but you need to go out and live somewhere where you can establish you build your mm -hmm. brand and my brand was built for me really there in brazil because we have many credible people come in behind and say, I want to support what you're doing. How do I get involved? You know? Which prime minister was that? Was that Owen Arthur? So I hope that answers your question. That was the Honorable um, Owen Seymour Arthur, yes. A <laughs> Good man. He was, he was a great man. I met him, I met him a few times um, here in Miami. When uh, when he would come visit, when he was prime minister. Wow. Great man, I tell you. He was like, this man can sit with kings and he can sing with, sit with paupers and, and treat yes. all of them on the same respect. I mean, yes. he was a great man, great man, I tell you. Exactly. <laughs>
Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So I remember, we'll say, I remember mm -hmm. one time um, we, were, we were, sorry, breaking up again. Yeah. No, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, I remember one time we were drinking and um, he peered over the glass, you know, and he, he looked at me and he, Doc, it's just money. <laughs> 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 we were talking about all of these millions of dollars that organizations are raking in, and he just looked over the glasses like, Doc, it's just money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember when he used to come here, he would go, we, um, yes, we, yes. we would be down at the um, the Consul General's house because every time he came here, the Consul General would have um, a party um, or a get together at the house down in um, Coral Gables. Right. And, um, and, you know, and you know, okay. the prime minister would, he would sit there and he would play dominoes with you. He, you know, I mean, it's like, it didn't feel like he was prime minister. Yeah. He was just yeah. one of the guys. And, and he made sure that they invited yeah. everyone. I mean, we had people that were brain surgeons and we had people that were garbage collectors. He did not care. You, um, if you, yeah. if your passport and your birth certificate yeah. said Barbados, then Owen Arthur was going to get you to, uh, he made sure everybody got an um, invitation. And at the time, the, um, the council general was um, Ben Martinez, and um, and and I mean, I tell you, it was like, I mean, I met people from all over that I didn't even know about. Oh, we lost him again. He just his connection just dropped. His connection just dropped. We um we just lost him. I'm sure he's gonna rejoin. But in the meantime, let me go ahead and run another commercial, and um and we'll be right back as soon as um as soon as Doc um reconnect. Baby, won't you take me there? I want some real good food to eat. I want shocking it down. designers to get your taste palette back in line baby follow us at we shock all right we're back all right so doc are you there uh oh i think we just lost them again yes i am can you hear me oh there we go now i can hear you yeah but okay, um but you. he was definitely one of the he was definitely one of the great ones you know what i mean um um I, I tell you, I mean, I didn't know Errol that um that well. Well, I didn't know Errol. I met him. I, I met him. I think just once with my dad, because him and my dad were like this. They were like, you know, they were cousins, so they were really close friends. Um, but um, but okay. so from but what I hear, Barry. um, Errol Barry, yeah, huh? From what I from what I hear about Errol, um, he was really he was a really yeah. good people person. He was the people's prime minister. But um, but from yes. what I know of um of Oin well, Arthur, Oin Arthur was was well, he was the man. He was like you know, <laughs> he was definitely the yes, man. He was. I I I used to think. I remember before I met him, I used to think this guy is just a great economist because I didn't mm -hmm. have that personal con contact. But um, through a mutual political colleague. Um, I was introduced, and the conversation that we had was 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 just phenomenal. And I was just thinking to myself, this guy's a prime minister, and he's just having a conversation, you know, with with, <laughs> with these this group of. And he was talking to a group of guys, you know. Um, we were on the university backyard, and he was just talking. I was like, wow, this is this is the kind of person I would like to be, you know. Not afraid to speak to kings, but not afraid to speak to persons you know with less notoriety definitely exactly yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so você fala portuguese i love I, I love brazil i love barbados yes i can i can speak portuguese thank God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I speak it a little I bit i don't speak it portuguese the other day as well man where where was that 
You you told me you told me that you speak Portuguese. Yeah, yeah, I do. But um, and I, it's um, I've had a couple of videos that I spoke to people before. Um, I understand it more than I speak okay. it. You know, because um, because yes. Um, yes. the company I work for, which is um, Embraer, Embraer, um, they they used to give us Portuguese classes so I that we can. Keep... Oh yeah, it's the second largest in Brazil. Um, I think yeah, Petrobras. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Petrobras is the only one bigger than Embraer in Brazil. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But, um, uh, yeah, um, Portuguese doesn't come easy once you once you understand the basic sounds. Um, for example, yeah, <laughs> you laugh. There yeah. are basic <laughs> <sound in> Portuguese. <laughs> yeah, because it's what threw me off in, in Portuguese was. What threw me off was because I um, I was learning Spanish in school, and you know in Spanish it's a little bit different because like um, they pronounce the V as a B like um, you know um, and they pronounce the um, the J as a H so they'll say Jose um, you yes. know so but then in, in Brazil the J is a J so when you say you don't say San Jose you say San yeah. Jose which is what a lot of people make the mistake and they say oh. Exactly. Yeah, they'll say um, in Brazil it's yeah. San Jose. Yes. No, it's San Jose if you're in Brazil. If you're in Mexico or somewhere, you can say um, yeah. you know when I, San, when, San Jose. When I went there, I didn't speak. I didn't speak Spanish or or any. I only spoke English when I went to Brazil and a little Italian. But mm -hmm. Portuguese was so different. I, I I took a year and fifteen a year and three months to learn mm -hmm. Portuguese to to actually wow. start to understand it. And I remember that I was at a, a I was in a social conference um, in in Mogi, no sorry in São Paulo, with some brothers, mm -hmm. and the guy was sharing, and when he said something, and when he said it, it was almost as if my ears popped, and I was <laughs> it was like I could understand what he just said. Okay, <laughs> and the person that my, my brother next to me, he was like, Oh, and now you get it, you know. <laughs> of course, he said it was like, Be calm, you know. In Brazil, they always tell you, Calm, that be tranquilo, calm. So yeah, you, you get it, it tranquilo. Early, you know. But I was really, I was really excited, I was really yeah. excited. And and having having learned Portuguese opens so many doors for you. It's like Barbados and and Brazil has so much to offer each other, you know? And whenever I speak to persons, they say to me, you know, no one had the courage to, to learn the language, you know? But I know, I, I know the Barbados ambassador to Brazil speaks Portuguese. And we had oh, sure. conversations before I left uh, Brazil. Yeah, yeah. And she's a mm -hmm. real amazing person, very down to earth as well. Yeah, because um, and Belize is another yeah. country too that um that um that is really good too and really close um with Barbados too. Um, Belize is really good. I'm actually trying to get some people from Belize to be on the show so that we can um, chat with them. Um, you know, um, but yeah, but Brazil. Um, I, I haven't been there, but from what I understand, it's a beautiful country, beautiful women, beautiful food. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna love beautiful. it. The music is good. You have you go um, to Brazil, you are going mm -hmm. to feel as if you were in Barbados. Definitely. It, it, really? it, is, it is not only beautiful, but the people are also beautiful as well. It, mm -hmm. it, they're so welcoming that you feel like, wow, like where where were you all my life? You know, in my travels. <laughs> I mean, I've been to Europe and when I was in London, for example. You know, they they shrug shoulder and the the they lack of the lack of respect is totally different in contrast to to Brazil. They're they're mm -hmm. like, oh, you're coming to my house for a beer tonight. You know, I I will give you one example. We were on our way home from a, from a party and it was maybe around two o'clock in the night, and mm -hmm. the guy who was driving he was like, Doctor Disney, um, I have to have a conversation with this guy, and I was like, thought he was having a conversation with a friend in a car. When I opened, when I rolled down the window, the guy on the other side was on a horse. And he was having a conversation with a guy on a horse in the street, and I was just there, so sort of praying and saying, "Please, just you know, just just get me home safe." <laughs> oh, <laughs> you're like, oh God, what what I get into now, you know? <laughs>
Oh man. But yeah, I'm telling you, it's, uh, it, I love to travel and I love to, um, to, to meet people from different places because I think that um, no matter where yes. you go in this world, we have more in common than we have, in, um, than we have different. And, um, and I, I try to tell yeah. people that all the time, we, we have to look for the similarities. We have to look for what we have in common. Now, that doesn't mean that everything is going to be perfect because there's no such thing as perfect. But yes. if we can find exactly. one thing that we have in common and we can build on that, then we can make a difference. Yeah. And it's kind of that. I, I I saw I saw I was um, doing a little research on you um, when I had, <laughs> wanted to come on your program. I read uh -huh. the work you were doing it because I would have made contact with you um, since 2016. It would have been 2016 that I had heard about you um, through a mutual colleague, and and I said this guy is doing a lot of work in you know in Broward County and and, and and stuff. And I reached out to you. I think it was through. But at the time, I wasn't settled yet, and I was trying to figure out, okay, how how are we going to do this national this international work? How, how are we going to get all these people involved and and what's not having done all of that? Um, and I was thinking to myself, Barrow, maybe he is he is you know um, a Rabaro's family, <laughs> right? Yeah, that's what I was thinking uh, to myself. Yeah, you see, I was thinking, but, and and that's a his legacy, his legacy, man. Like, but you you, oh, you reached out to me on you reached out to me on LinkedIn. Yes, I did. Yeah, I I reached out to you on LinkedIn because you would have been you were in you were on round it wasn't round table with Steve. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, it was so round table with Steve. Where you were interviewing from Barbados. Yeah, you were interviewing business persons from Barbados, and I think it was with the Barbados Chamber of Commerce, if my memory serves me correct. Yeah. Right. You're right. You're right. It was. <laughs> Yeah, that was um. Yeah, we were interviewing some people yeah. from Barbados. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, that was years ago, and I apologize. I mean, I have yeah. um right now. I I have um I believe eighteen thousand people on LinkedIn. So it <laughs> so it makes it a little bit hard to um to you know. Wow. I, and I'm trying to find the exact number here um so I can see exactly how many. Right, but but on LinkedIn, um, yeah. eighteen. I reached eight, out there because I I had. Go ahead. Yeah. I want I want to show you I want to show you the um the LinkedIn tab so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay. Sure. See um right there. So if I um. Let's see. You see right here, eighteen thousand seven hundred twenty-seven. And then, and um, yeah, and now there's still another one. Um, this one right here. He, yeah. And people keep sending me requests. Like there's another request right there. You know, so it's it's yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> So I apologize about I apologize that we didn't get in um in touch before, you know. But <laughs> and that's just LinkedIn on that Facebook. That is amazing. Do you? It, you hmm? also you also didn't you also didn't know you you also didn't know who I was at the time and um what could I have said? <laughs> so it worked out it but, worked out fine because having returned and also see what you're doing. And I'm thinking to myself, yeah, I, I really should reach out um, to this to this guy, you know, um, a, a fellow brother who's doing similar things. I think that you were really on the cuffs of something amazing. I appreciate that. I really do. You know, you're the third person in um, in 24 sure. hours that that mentioned that to me. We, wow. We, yeah, we'll definitely talk um, talk afterwards because there's a lot that I want to do, and I want to do. There's a lot I want to do in Barbados as well. I have um I have a few different ideas, and now COVID because of COVID and because we're doing so much um remotely, it gives me an opportunity to start doing some right. work um you know in Barbados yeah. and different countries and um and um and I could 
instead of having to fly there, I can now do the work that I've been doing in Broward County all over the country, all over the world, um, you know, helping different people when it comes to, um, yeah. to things from like financial equality, um, all these different things, because I mean, the resources are there, everything is there, but if you yes, don't know yes. it's there, then you don't know to, um, you right. don't know to get it. And if you don't, and even yes. if you have it in your hand and you don't know how to use it, you know, it's like, it's like a knife. If you put a knife in yes. a chef's in a chef's hand, he can fillet a fish, debone that fish, and he can um, he can put prepare it um, in, in such a way that that you can cook it, and it'll be the best fish ever. You put the knife in a killer's hand, and he can go and kill people. It's the same tool, yes, but we don't realize that we have we have yeah, tools exactly. in us yes. right now that we can use to grow not just um, our wealth but yeah. generational wealth. You know, so we, we really have to, um, and these are some of the things and, I want to do. You, you just said a point that is interesting. Well, what's that? Yeah, I, I am. I am also. I also have a program on. I also have a radio program on Two Forces Beige Vibes Radio dot com. A recent program we started called Doctor Daisy Speaks. I can have you on the show as well. To, we can expound some of these topics as well. Definitely. Definitely, because um, I'm not sure. yes, uh -huh. yes, I did hear you, and I would love to okay. be on your program. Okay. Perfect, I, perfect. Let's set it up, then. Yeah, definitely, because I, I I think that um that it is our responsibility to teach someone else what we know, and then um and because we 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 exactly. are only. We are only as good as what we do with the information we have. God didn't bless us so that we can show it off. He blessed us so that we can teach someone else. And um, that's what we have to start to learn. Yes. 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 Do you, do you, do you realize, I, I said to someone, you know, the older generation, the older generation used to hold information used to hold information for their life. If you have a recipe, for example, don't want to pass the recipe on to the next generation. And sometimes great ideas die with the old generation. So one of the things that we're doing is we're looking at, you know, how to give back to society and how I, I'm attracting people who have something to offer to affect our society. Because when we're dead, that's it. What exactly. we pass on is the only thing that will remain. And so I'm, I'm, I'm really, really for networking and building um, networking businesses around this around this world and impacting people's lives because after after you've said all that you've said how are you going to change my life exactly you know, when i learn all the skills that i learned how am i going to how am i how am i pass that on to the next generation and that's all i'm interested in really you know so i'll be reaching out to our barbados government of course for you know the projects that we'll be working on i'm working on the ebook as well as some um, e-videos as well, um, for training and development, all this, um, Zoom. And yeah, we, we can partner, we can for sure. Definitely. I was speaking to, um, I had someone else on the show um, about three weeks ago, a lady named Keisha. And, um, and she and her husband, they do a lot of work over in Ghana. And, um, and you know, one of the things that we were oh. talking about, yeah, one of the things we were talking about is she, um, they, um, they would buy like bags and different things that, that were made by the locals in Ghana and then come here to sell them and then send the money back to Ghana. So they're not doing it for a profit for themselves. They're doing it to, um, to, um, so that the people in Ghana can actually make money. Okay. Instead of people um, taking it and selling it and only giving them 50 cents they're selling it and giving the majority of the money back to the people in Ghana, you know? Um, so they're doing a lot yes. of stuff in, in Ghana and they're, they're actually wow. building up the, um, the Ghanaian yeah. community. Um, there's another lady that, um, that's going to be on the show. Right. Um, uh -huh. when, when? No, go ahead. You were saying that a lot of what? That's, 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 yeah, that's pretty interesting because um, Ghana seems to be Ghana seems to to be creating a form a, a, some form of a hub, 
not only for the Caribbean, but it seems as though businesses are going towards Ghana. Yes. There's a lady um, from Barbados um, named Natasha Bino, and she um, and she lived in New York, and she ended up quitting her job and moving to Ghana so she can trace the roots of the Barbadian slave trade and um, and things like that. So she lived between Ghana, Barbados, and New York so that she can actually trace the roots of people and the slave trade and. I mean, she's doing remarkable stuff. So she's going to be on the show too. Um, you know, we, we got a lot of great people coming up. Wow. <laughs> and I mean, and that's dedication. When you just, when you say you're going to, like you said, you, you, left, you left Barbados and you went to, um, to Brazil for six years. I mean, that's dedication when you're going to pick up and move to Ghana. You're moving out to Africa yeah. to, um, to study all these different things, you know. So, um, yeah, and this is why I do the show. I want to bring that. Yeah, this is why I do the show. I want to bring the information to the people. I want people to see what what's going on out there. I want people to see what great things we are doing as a culture, as a people. I don't just want them to see that we're coming up with, you know, rap videos and yeah. this. Okay, yeah. that's great. That's awesome. But we're doing a lot of a lot of educational stuff. Things yeah. that need to we need to open up our kids' minds and um and. And and when we open their mind, we have to pour the right, right. things into their mind, you know. But um, but you know, I um. So we'll yeah, we'll. You're, 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 you're not only saying the right, but. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Hello. Yeah. So I was saying that you're not only saying the right things, but you're also doing the right things. I appreciate that. All right, but um, um, I so I, I need to wrap up now because in order for me to be able to put um to put it on um on Instagram, I have to yeah, keep it under you. an hour. <laughs> but um, but I'm gonna give okay. you a call in, in just a few minutes. I hope you can um, send to me. Yeah, I will. I'll give you a call in just a few minutes, so we'll chat about when um when I can be on your show. You're saying it keeps. I'll I'll call you in a few minutes. Cheers. Thank you. All right then. I'll talk to you later. It was great talking to you. All right, guys. So you know, I, of course, I always try to bring the best information. Um, you know, the best of the best. And there you have it. We I'm talking about the culture in Belize. I'm, I'm sorry, in Brazil. I keep saying Belize in Brazil. <laughs> Um, you know, and then Barbados and, um, and some of the, not just the differences, but we also want to know the similarities because we want to be able to, to, to use those similarities to bridge cultures, to bridge gaps. Okay. Um, so these are the, some of the things that we have to start doing in our lives. We have to look for similarities that we can bridge. All right. We can use as a bridge. So anyhow, guys, definitely go out to, um, to lunchtime talk with steve.com. Click on the get help section. And if there's anything in there that you need, definitely do not hesitate to get it. You have 211 that helps you with your light and your rent. You have Feed in America that has um, the food banks near you. Um, you have so many different things in there. Go out to the website. Put your pride aside and do it, all right? And again, as I always tell you, you are your brother's keeper. So definitely look out for the next person. Go do a random act of kindness for a stranger because tomorrow you may be that stranger that needs that random act of kindness, all right? Let's go ahead and do this, people. Let's live together. Let's try to see how we can help each other out. All right, guys. I'll talk to you all tomorrow. Tomorrow, what's tomorrow? Is tomorrow Friday already? Tomorrow's Friday. Yeah, wow. Okay, cool. So tomorrow we are going to do a freestyle Friday kind of thing. So um, we'll be looking at a few different topics and talking about those, all right? All right, guys. So again, take care of yourself. Take care of each other. Do a random act of kindness for a stranger. Peace, people. Please visit lunchtimetalkwithsteve.com if you would like to be a guest or advertise on the show. If you're interested in any of the products or services you saw on the show today, or if you would like to be a guest on the show, please visit our website.